Your boy Vella back with another video. I got a movie review this time. I finally sat down and watched How High 2. I was disappointed, just like everybody else, that Red Man and Method Man were not a part of the movie. They had nothing to do with the movie, even though they gave us that classic a while ago. They had nothing to do with this movie. It was Ludi Yachty, as you can see, and DC Young Fly. Ludi Yachty making his acting debut as far as him being a main star, I'm guessing. I think he did something else, a show or something like that, but I think. And DC Young Fly has been in other movies, but he wasn't a uh, leading role in the movie. It's really these two guys' movie. Um, so... If, like I said, I was disappointed when Method Man and Redman wasn't a part of it, but I understood when DC Young Fly said that, you know, he wished they could have been a part of the movie, but they just wasn't a part of it. And it is what it is, you know, so I'm not going to hate on him for getting a movie role. That's what's up, man, because you started off on Instagram and Vine. So that's what's up for you to make it, to be in movies. And he's also said that it was the highest rated TV movie on MTV, you know, for a while. And for people to not watch TV like that, that says a lot about Lil Yachty and DC Young Fly's buzz as far as the industry. So salute those guys for that as well. But I'm going to go into the talk about the movie and some of the characters in the movie. Get my review on it. Now, I, it's a different scenario. Um... The movie starts off at Lil Yachty is working at a chicken restaurant and your boy Carlos Miller is the manager for him. Um, and Justine Sky, the singer, is in the movie as well. In the beginning, I guess, you know, Yachty and DC Young Fly, they're cousins in the movie. Um, they're weed heads. <laughs> DC Young Fly sells weed. Yachty works at a restaurant. Justine Sky is another pothead in the movie. Um, Yachty, Justine Sky, and another white girl, they get high. Um, Yachty leaves his shift. He get high. A lot of things go wrong, though, after that. He gets set up, um, and they tie him up and leave him at the restaurant. And... I wasn't sure why they did that at first, but I had to keep watching. They did that, and um, after that, you know, you see it's a little funny part when Carlos Miller and Lil Yachty, he gets fired right then, but he was supposed to be going to the bait, to get a bait loan. That's what he does. He goes to a bait loan, try to get one. He got a messed up tank top. You don't have his shirt. You don't have his stuff together. And he has a good idea, which is a is a good idea. I'm surprised that that's not something that's available in real life. I think it should. Somebody should probably try to develop that. His idea is basically um, an app to where stoners can hit up people, basically like Uber Eats or whatever. You get certain snacks or whatever delivered to your house when you're stoned, you're too stoned, and you can't go anywhere. And I think that's a good idea, especially for people who indulge in marijuana. You know, and I think that's a good idea. And I think nobody has thought of nothing like that, which is crazy. I think that's wrong. So in, in the movie, you know, the bank dude that's in the movie is a, the same white dude that is from the first How High. The dude that was like the security guard, the, the real corny dude, the security dude on the campus you know, trying to get Method Man and Red Man in trouble. He has a different character. He works at the bank. And he doesn't able to get the loan. He doesn't have collateral or nothing like that. He doesn't have any type of money to back him. He doesn't have nobody to back him. DC Young Fly didn't show up. DC Young Fly was having sex with a woman. Didn't show up. So that was a dud, you know. So they go back. They go back to... The basement, that's where they live. <laughs> and that's, Liyadi lives in the basement, and DC Young Fly lives with him. That's where they go to the basement. Nene leaks. 
from Real Housewives of Atlanta. It's Lil Yachty's mom. You know, all of a sudden, they find a book. The book contains how you grow a specific type of weed, and it's real strong, and that's what it, it gets good. They just find a book in the corner, find a blunt, they smoke some of it, take them to another world, and they see Mike Epps, <laughs> and he's he's not powder, he's just a different character. They meet him, and he's telling them about the weed, telling them to grow it. They grow the weed, and... Things start to look on the up and up for those guys. It goes well. They start booming in Atlanta because in Atlanta, the weed was dry during this period of time. The weed was dry. You know, D-Ray Davis is also in the movie, which his parts are hilarious. Like, I think y'all should go see it. His parts are hilarious. He's the dude. He's DC Young Fly's plug in the movie. He's selling the weed. He's the plug. And he's and DC Young Fly Baker telling him, you know, your weed is garbage. You know, after they was left the bank, your weed is garbage. They find a book or whatever. They start selling this real good weed, booming in Atlanta. It just changes everybody's mood instantly. Nobody's angry. You know, they get into some stuff. So they're trying to work with other people, trying to find some resources. Um, oh, yeah, I forgot to mention. When Yachty, Yachty left the bank, a high school girl that he went to school with, you know, he's not a high school anymore, but a girl he went to high school with is a girl that's really going to help them when it comes to the end. Like, meet her. He sees her, and she works for a medical marijuana company. Lottie didn't know that at first, but that also helps them. Um, so what happens is she goes along with them, and... She is trying to help them figure out, navigate throughout the movie because when they start booming and everything like that, D-Ray and his crew, they got the Bama weed. They got the bull, the bull weed that's trash on these streets. They found out they booming. They see they, they clothes starting to look better. They getting money. You know, he sees that. He goes and robs them, takes the book, and... Sells it to the medical marijuana company that's that's has the weed and they flipping it and they're using it and they're selling the weed for the government and everything like that. So the girl that works for the company basically they're just trying to figure out to navigate how to get the right resources, connect with the right people throughout the movie. That's basically what they're doing. And you see a lot of funny things happen. They're just basically trying to get their resources together. Throughout the movie, um, trying to figure this weed thing out. And she's helping them because she's kind of in the weed industry as far as the medical side of it. And they're trying to figure out who stole the weed, who stole the recipe. So they're just navigating throughout it. They go to different places to where they were selling weed, you know, um, with the college campuses and stuff like that. Um, and they figure out. That D-Ray took it or whatever. Towards the end of the movie, they figure out D-Ray took it and sold the book with the ingredients to where you can grow this specific type of weed that's going to have everything booming. They figure that out. They So when they figure that out, they infiltrate. They try to infiltrate the, um, the medical marijuana company and everything like that because they're taking it. And they're they're not doing a good job as far as the medical side of it because when they're taking all the weed off the streets and they're developing it themselves, it's not having good side effects on the people. So that's why they're trying to whole movie. That's what they're trying to do: find out who took it, infiltrate, get it back, get everything going. You know, because they lost everything, and just try to navigate. Um, and then and I think that the movie was funny. I think it was funny. It had some parts. You know, where it was like, it's unbelievable, but it's a stoner flick. So, most stoner flicks, you're going to have such situations where you're like, oh, man, what the hell? That's crazy. You know what I mean? Like, them getting high and seeing another version of themselves. Like, seeing another version. Like, they on the couch getting high. You see fly, see another person. But it's not really another person. He just high as hell 
off this good weed that they they got. And you see a lot of that, which I, I was going to expect that. It's a stone flick, and it's how high. How high the first one was kind of like that as well, like with them smoking, you know, the dead homie and seeing the dead homie or whatever, and then seeing the other dead people that they get up and smoke because they were trying to pass the um their test and get their grades right in the first movie. So you've seen a lot of that, you know, the actor wasn't great, but I don't think it was that bad of a movie, like like people were saying it. You know, I heard a lot of bad things, but I don't think it was that bad. To me, it's funny. The movie was funny to me. I watched it and I laughed. I think D-Ray was the funniest character in it. You know, DCL Fly was funny in the movie. Um, I Need Money was in the movie, but he had his money up. So he was, I get money <laughs> in this one. I thought that was funny. Add him in there. Um, you know, and it wasn't that bad. The movie wasn't that bad. It was kind of funny. You know, and at the end of it, when they're able to infiltrate and get everything going as far as with the medical business and everything, he's able, Yadi is able also to get the resources he need to launch his app. You know, and the good guy wins at the end. He able to launch his app, and they get rich, and everything goes well. He and then he delivered something at Carlos Milo house, the dude that fired him <laughs> from the chicken place. At the end, and everything goes well. Black Yus is in the movie. Little baby's in the movie. Wife fan Lucha, you see him, but he don't have a speaking part. He just in the strip club part when they go trying to figure out who took their product. Trying to navigate to see all the drug dealers in Atlanta, trying to figure out who took their their recipe, who took the book, and everything like that. So, yeah, it's pretty it's pretty funny to me. You know, I recommend you know anybody just go look at it, give it a chance before you just look at the reviews because I think that what happens a lot of times, and I say this when it comes to movies, right? That are classic movies we deem are classic movies. When those movies come out, right, that they, they become classics. A lot of times when movies try to take a different direction, sometimes in the second one or the third one or whatever, a lot of people write it off and they hold it up to the standard of the first movie. Um, And that's why when it doesn't hold up to that exact standard as the first the classic movie, they just automatically say it's trash and it sucks or whatever. And that's what you see, you know, with a lot of different movies. Um, so, and that's why it got a lot of kind of like kind of bad reviews, you know, some reviews at first. But me, I'm not going to give it a super bad review because I was laughing. I'm watching it and I'm laughing, you know, at it. I, you know, and it's like it did come to a point where it's like I wasn't even thinking about the first movie. I'm like, it did, it just seem like a different movie to me. It was how high too, but like I said, they only use. I need money, and he only had one part. My guess was in the movie, but he wasn't necessarily Powder, his his character from the first one, and the creepy white dude that stole Methane Man and Red Man's weed in the first movie, he had a different character. So, when you won't even think about it, it's like, it just seems like a stoner movie, a little funny little stoner movie, and you won't even think about it, like, damn, this is how high too? So, I recommend people to just go look at that Netflix, see what you think. It doesn't measure up to the first one because it's kind of different from the first one. But to me, I was laughing. I think it's a funny movie. So, salute Yachty, salute DC Young Fly. Oh, how high too? It was it was pretty funny. Salute D Ray Davis. He had the funniest part. Salute on that and. I want to see, you know, I want to see what else DC Young Fly do when it comes to the movies, man. I want to see because I, I think he's talented. This dude, it kind of reminds me of Jamie Foxx. And then it's like, it's like I know y'all might beat me down for saying that, but it's like, yeah, I'm talking about as far as the being multi-talented. That, that's what I'm saying. You know, I'm, I'm not saying he is Jamie Foxx because Jamie Foxx has been doing this for a long time. I'm not saying he is, but that he just reminds me of Jamie Foxx because of him being multi-talented. He's a funny guy. Like, Jamie Foxx is very funny. And he can sing, too, as well. Like, Jamie Foxx 
can act and he can sing. So that's what I mean when I say that. He can, so I'm looking forward to see what he does in the future when it comes to movies. I would like to see him in some more comedies, more stoner flits, you know, because, you know, it was funny to me. So salute DC Young Fly again. Salute Yachty, man. Salute D Ray. And y'all watch it. Tell me what y'all think. Do y'all think it sucked because it didn't compare to the first one? Or was it funny to y'all? Or what? You know, let me know what y'all thought about that. Let me know what y'all thought about my review if you had already saw it. And it's your boy Veli. I'm out. Peace.